A servant works for wages. He works so that he can get paid. But a son works for the pleasure of it. He doesn't care to be paid. He, he does it because it's a joy to work alongside the father. And that's how it is in our church. We don't come to church so that we can be appreciated, so that our names would be put on a plaque. Some people are so married to their names and their, their, their identity that they forgot the big picture of why the church exists. That's what the Bible says. There are some people that sow, some others water, but it is the Lord that causes it to grow. So if I get a chance to sow, praise God. If I get the chance to water, praise God. If I just get to, like I, the other day I said, if I can just even have the privilege of being in the same room and breathing the same oxygen and celebrating the joy in the same house, I will enjoy that with all my heart. Because I do it for the pleasure of my king. I'm here to celebrate. Can, can somebody agree with me on that? So a servant serves out of knowledge because he's saying, I got to do this. If I do this, da, 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 da. if I got to do this, I'm under pressure. So the whole time he's doing this, if he's happy, he does it happy. But if he's not, he's still doing it, but he's cribbing, crying because he's doing things out of knowledge that he's supposed to do it. But a son, uh -uh, he does it out of revelation. He's not doing it because he was told to do it. He does it because he knows this is his house. And that's very important for us to know. Our sonship, this house is yours. God brought you to this place. This is your house. Nobody needs to tell you to do things. Take a pick up something, clean something, fix something. Say, Pastor, I don't like the carpet. Can I pay you for a better carpet? And then there was a pin drop silence in the church. <laughs> a servant offers what is convenient, but a son offers what costs him. Elijah burned everything down. He says, take everything. Servant would give according to what he, he has. But, but a son burns everything down. Say, everything that I have is yours. And that's the difference of sonship. And that is what you will see when, when, when the reason why the five loaves and the two fish multiplied into 5,000 wasn't because the, the unique thing about it was that that little boy was willing to give all the five loaves and the two fish into the hands of Jesus. The reason why the two pennies touched the heart of Jesus, of that, that, that widow who gave that Two, two pennies into the offering box. The reason why that touched the heart of God wasn't the amount. It was in her heart that she gave everything. So today we have people that are like, should we give our 10% tithe? Should we give 15? Should we, should we, is tithe even there? Is tithe not there? Is it, is it abolished? Listen, Jesus said, do, let your righteousness outdo the Pharisees and Sadducees. That means the Pharisees and Sadducees are fighting over 10%. Believers in the New Testament, we do better than 10%. And then I lost all your amens again. You guys are so choosy. <laughs> like this one I'll skip. I'll say amen to the next one. <laughs> and, and, and that's why you will see in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, they sold all their possessions and came in and laid it at the feet of the apostles. Why? Because they, they, they moved from giving 10% to saying, I'm moving into sonship. Take it all. All, everything that I have is yours. We are one body. Let that revelation stir you. We are one.